guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. You have joined me in my hot seat today, which is in my design studio, where I'm gonna be going over a whole Q&A of questions that you have asked me on my Instagram story. So hopefully this video will give you an insight and allow you to get to know me a little more than you do already and answer any questions that you have or anything that you need to know. I'm so excited about this video, so let's jump straight in. So I've got my iPad set up down here, so I'm gonna go through and answer all of the questions. So the first question, which was the most asked question by the way, is how do you start out as a freelancer finding clients? So I'm gonna break this down and hopefully this can help if you are worrying about trying to find clients. I just wanna put a disclaimer out there that obviously there are gonna be tons of different experiences and things that work for you. You just have to find what works for you and what doesn't. So for me, it is social media. I show up every single day, I'm consistent, and this is how I attract my potential clients. So when I first started, which was probably back in 2019, I wasn't posting frequently. Um, the standard of my work wasn't great and I wasn't showing my face. As soon as I realized my mistakes and what I needed to do, this is when I truly started to grow. So the first thing that I really, really recommend is doing passion projects. So if you don't know what passion projects are, they are basically projects that you can make up to attract those potential clients. So for example, if you are wanting to work with say a gin company, you could make up a passion project which is gin related, and then hopefully this will attract those potential clients and that sort of niche to your page, and then hopefully inquiring with you. When I first started, I think I probably did around eight to 10 different passion projects to see what would attract potential clients and it actually worked. Those clients came to me after they saw the work that I put out on my Instagram page, inquired with me and then I booked them in. So there are obviously different ways you can go about it. I do suggest interacting with those potential clients but don't come across as trying to sell them something because in my experience, it does just scare them away. I've just found if you get to know them more on a friend's basis before trying to sell your services, it is a much more appreciated by them than cold selling in their DMs. But the main thing to do if you have no clients to start with, do the passion projects to attract those potential clients. And that has been my biggest win for me for growing my client list and working with clients that I actually want to work with. So moving on to question number two, which is how many clients do you take on in a month? Now I'm gonna take this way back. So when I first started doing freelance, I would take on absolutely every single bit of work. When looking back, it's something I shouldn't have done, but at that time, I didn't wanna say no to potential clients. So I would probably take on around 20 to 30 clients in a month, which sounds absolutely ludicrous to me now because I actually don't know how I managed to do it, but I would take on really odd jobs. So I would work with companies where I haven't designed their logo or their brand, and I would do random business cards, random price lists, and I just found that I would take on loads and loads of clients. But it was a good way to get my foot in the door and work with clients in the real world. But after doing that for probably around four months, I came to the real realization that what I was doing, I wasn't enjoying. I realized that I wanted to work with brands one-on-one -on -one to bring their vision to life and actually do their whole branding from logos, stationery, and just everything. So that is when I started to put packages together that I would only take on work where I designed from logo to the end. And this was the best decision that I made because I started to really fall in love with design and working with clients to bring their visions to life. So fast forward to now, I take around three to five clients, depending on how big their package is and the time involved within that. And I've just found that this works for me. I've managed to figure out my timing and how long things take me. But once you have a better understanding of your timings and how many clients you can take on a month, it does get a lot easier. Okay, moving on to the next question, which is what to include in your presentation to clients. So this is referring to the brand presentation sent over to my client to showcase their whole brand from logos to mock-ups to everything like that. So. I will do around a 12 to 16 page PDF document that gets sent to them. So this includes the mood board, color palette, primary logo, secondary logo, logo marks, 
brand pattern and any brand elements within their branding, fonts used, photography direction, and mock-ups of their brand in action. And then alongside each of these elements, I will write paragraphs about why I have chosen to do specific things so they get an understanding more of the direction of the brand and why things have been used. So this presentation should give your client a really clear understanding of potentially what their brand could be and a look into all of their logos, the direction and just the overall feel of the brand. But don't worry because I have learned this over time. When I first started taking on clients, I kid you not, I would send over a JPEG of the logo and be like, here you go. Here's the look of the logo and that was it. To think that I used to do that makes me cringe a little because that was so wrong of me. So I've only learned this from experience and working with a lot of clients now. So sending over a JPEG to the client and getting their feedback is really hard for them to do because they will not have an understanding about the brand and why you have decided to do different things within their branding. It's always good to give them a clear indication of why specific things have been done within their branding. And it honestly does just come with time you will learn different things when you work with different clients and you will figure out what works for you and what doesn't okay so moving on to the next question now which is what made you start graphic design so I have always always been a really creative person and I knew when I went to college so I studied graphic design and fine art and psychology at A level and I got the best results in these creative fields so I knew that I wanted to get a job that could be creative and the option for me was graphic design at this point but I knew I didn't want to go to university because I didn't know if graphic design was actually going to be for me because back then I don't think I was that good at graphic design so after college, I'd obviously made the decision to not go to university. Um, luckily, an apprenticeship came up as a graphic designer and I got the job and the rest is history. I feel like over the past year, I have really blossomed into the designer that I've always wanted to be. And I'm so grateful that I get to work with so many different clients and do this as my full-time job. So hopefully you're enjoying this Q&A so far. It's actually really nice to sit down and talk to you guys and hopefully you can get to know me a little more. So moving on to the next question, which is what software do you use when designing? So I use Adobe for pretty much everything. It is my go-to. So I use Adobe Illustrator for creating logos, business cards. So any design that is more graphics based, I will use Adobe Illustrator. Then for anything that is text heavy, I go on to InDesign, which will be your brochures, your flyers, your price lists, anything that involves a lot of text. Then I will use Photoshop for editing any images, manipulating images, and for my mockups. Then I use Procreate on my iPad with the Apple Pencil, and this is to create any textures, any backgrounds that I think would work well within my client's work. Then for video editing, I use Premiere Pro. So for this video, I will edit this in Premiere Pro. And then last but not least, I use Adobe After Effects for any animation, making text move, or just animating logos. So when you think about it, that is actually quite a lot. And I have only learned all of these over the past five years. I would say Adobe Illustrator is my go-to and the one that I use literally on a daily basis. And I honestly don't think I could live without it. When you first look at Adobe Illustrator, Illustrator it can be quite scary but when you break down each element it honestly makes it so much easier to use and it is such a good software to use so if you aren't using it for design work I would 100% recommend doing it because it is the standard software you would use going into any design agency too. So next question is what do you include in final brand files and the best way to send them to a client? So the most important thing here is you need to make sure you are sending over vector file formats. So a vector file in really simple terms basically means that it is scalable. So if you need it blown up massive, it will never ever get blurry. Whereas if you're using raster file types, it means that the image is going to be blurry. So the files that I will send over to my clients are, this is just my preference by the way, is the AI file, which is Adobe Illustrator, EPS, PDF, 
JPEG and PNG. Now I send all of these files over in different color formats and my client can sometimes have over 100 to 150 different files. It just means that my client has the versatility to actually use every single file whenever they need them and hopefully they won't have to come back to me to get more files. As in the past when I've just sent over the PDF, JPEG and PNG files, I found my client was coming back to me saying my vendor or a business has asked for the file in EPS or AI so I just send everything so they have it and it means that if they want to get signage or anything done then they have the files to do so. It's always good to just go above and beyond when sending files because you never know what your client might need them for. Okay so the next question is how long have you been a designer and have you always worked as a freelancer? So no I haven't always worked as a freelancer so I touched on this shortly in one of the previous questions but I got the apprenticeship after college as a graphic designer. I actually didn't complete the whole apprenticeship, so I did around four months and then they actually hired me full time. So then I was pretty much a junior designer at this company. After working there for around nine months, um, another opportunity came up as a graphic designer for a massive holiday park near where I lived. So I went to the interview and I managed to get it and I ended up working there for four years. So I must have got this job when I was around 17, 18. I, th I think that's right, I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, I worked there for four years and basically learned everything on the job everything about design and print and it was probably the best decision I could have made before going into freelance. If I went freelance back then, I honestly don't think I would be in the position that I am today. So getting that experience with working with other creatives, other businesses is such a good thing to do. So after three years of working for them, I actually started my own business of doing like illustrations for people. And this didn't really take off that much. I was getting a few clients, but it wasn't until 2020 when the pandemic hit when I obviously got furloughed and had a lot of time on my hand and this really made me sit down and think what I wanted to do with my life and it made me realize that I wasn't happy at my current job because it was restricting me from becoming the designer that I've always wanted to be. So with all of this time on my hands of being furloughed, I started to work really, really hard on my business, on my Instagram page and showing up more and really working on my design skills. So after doing that for six months, I'd say working on my business, that is when I really started to see the style of design that I love the most and the clients that I really Really loved working with and now fast forward to a year later we are in April nearly May 2021 and I honestly couldn't be happier it has been a whole year since I was furloughed and I am a completely different person to what I was back then and I honestly couldn't be happier to be in this position that I am today being a designer working with clients and doing this as my full-time job makes me appreciate it so, so much. And I'm just so grateful. And it has given me the opportunity to start this YouTube channel, show up more on my social media and just actually show the real me. And I honestly feel so lucky to be in this position that I am today. But it doesn't go without hard work. What some of you guys don't see is me working literally 12 to 14 hours a day, putting all my effort into my business and not having a social life, but I honestly wouldn't change it for the world because I am working hard for a future that I really, really want. And I'm so glad that I get to bring you all along on my journey too, so you guys can watch me grow as well. I feel like I'm getting a bit emotional saying this, but yeah, I'm just so grateful to be in this position right now. So let's move on to the next question, which is how to approach potential clients without seeming like you're selling something. So I think I answered this a little bit before, but I'm gonna dive deep into this. So I have never actually gone into someone's DMs and sold them my services, but obviously this can work for some people and some people that I've spoken to, it has worked for them as well. So I'm gonna share my advice on this topic. So. My suggestions is following those potential clients that you want to work with. So searching for hashtags, finding clients where you think their branding could be better and you know what you can bring to the table for them. So I would suggest following them, interacting with them, liking their posts, just commenting really nice stuff as if it was your friend. Always think of it as if you met that business owner in person, how would you interact with them? You wouldn't just say to them, hi, 
I do this, I can offer you this service, this is what my business can do for you. You wouldn't do that in person, so treat them as if they were a friend, treat them as if you were meeting them in person. How would you interact with them? How would you introduce yourself? Treat it like that and hopefully you will get a better response from them. So I would suggest interacting with them for around one to two months. This isn't gonna be a really quick process. Obviously, if you wanna cold sell in someone's DMs, go for it, but when people do that to me, I instantly either ignore them or tell them that I'm not interested in the services because they don't wanna get to know me. They don't know who I am. They are just selling me something in my DMs and it's not nice. So interact with them for one to two months comment on their posts, like their posts if they put stories up, interact with them as if they were your friend. Don't try and come across as if you're selling something to them. And hopefully they will start following you back, seeing your posts, and if you create passion projects that are similar to their business, they might see the value in your work and think, oh, they can bring something to the table. My branding isn't that good. I've been wanting to rebrand my business and the person that I know that does this is you. Then hopefully this will get them to inquire with you and then hopefully they can book in with you. So the next question is a bit of me, which is how can I be more confident in the things I do? So there's two sides to this. There's actually having confidence within yourself and then having confidence within your work. So within yourself, wing it until you make it. This is the motto to live by and something that I have lived by. So a year ago is when I started talking on my Instagram stories and I started this YouTube channel. So I did that as a way of pushing myself out of my comfort zone, which is something you really need to start doing if you wanna have more confidence. Being comfortable will not make you grow at all. You need to step out of your comfort zone to really grow and get that confidence that you're after. You have to understand that that is literally never gonna be a time where you feel ready to talk on your Instagram stories or feel like you're the most confident person. You just have to wing it and then people will start believing and once they start believing, you will hopefully start believing that too. I am not the most confident person. I would have never have thought I would make a YouTube channel. I used to be awful at speaking on camera and I was never a confident person in that sort of sense. So to see that change over a year, like it is gonna take time to feel more confidence, but you have to start somewhere. And if that means posting your workout on Instagram and being judged by other designers, posting your face on your Instagram story and speaking, you just have to do it to get over that fear. And once you start doing it, you will see a growth in yourself and within your work. And something that has really helped me is literally talking on my Instagram stories. By doing that, I was able to start this YouTube channel because I had that confidence of just speaking to the camera a little bit. I used to fear so much of what people that actually knew me, so people from school, people from college, what they would think of me. And I just thought, you know what, if people judge, it is only because they have that insecurity with themselves. Would they be able to show up and do a YouTube channel? Would they be able to talk to the camera like I'm doing now? Probably not. So if they are judging and if they are talking about me, then it's only because they have that insecurity themselves. And when you realize that, I think big things can really happen. You just have to step over that first hurdle of doing things, putting yourself out there, and hopefully this will help with your confidence. Then having confidence within your design will come over time. And something that's really helped me is this design community. So if you don't have an Instagram page, please make one because the design community that I am in is incredible. The support that you get from other designers is just phenomenal and it's something that I didn't think existed and was out there and it can really help with your confidence speaking to other designers, getting their feedback and putting your work out there. So if you are scared to put your work out there then you have to try and get over that first hurdle you have to start posting and getting feedback from other people and once again wing it until you make it for me i really worked on my design skills and my design style over the past year i never would see myself as a really good designer when i first started but i now have the confidence to think do you know what i am good at what i do and it shows through my work and how passionate i am about what i do and like i said this will come over time if you start posting more frequently doing more passion projects, working on your skills, learning software, the confidence will come over time if you combine all of these things. You just have to make sure that you are constantly trying to improve on the skills that you have and pushing yourself out of your comfort zone because this is where you will truly grow. Okay, so this is gonna be the last question because I literally feel like I haven't stopped talking and my throat is probably gonna get very croaky very soon. So the last question is, what does your inquiry form include? Now, 
I always get a lot of questions about my inquiry form. So I have had to start opening and closing my waitlist and my inquiry form just because I don't have the capabilities to take every single work on and keeping up with inquiries can be really, really hard. And I know in the future it is something where I'm gonna have to hire a virtual assistant or someone to help me with my inquiries and then hopefully potentially hire another designer to help me as well. Okay, so on my inquiry form, when it is open, I will basically get an overview of what they're after. So I will include like the name of the business, the name of the person, what their business is and what they do, their email address, what package they're after, if they're after anything else other than what's in the package, a link to their Pinterest board so I can get an overall view of the direction of their branding and then a budget question to see what their set budget is for this project. And then I will ask why they specifically want to work with me. Now that is probably the most important question for me is knowing that there is a reason why they want to work with me and how passionate they are about their business and their branding because I have a certain style. So if my style doesn't fit with their business, we're probably not gonna be the best fit for each other. So after they've answered these questions, I will then go through the inquiry form and look at their mood board, the direction of their brand, look at their answers. And then if I feel like we are a good fit, I will email them asking about the whole project, what they're looking for. And then once they are booked in, I have a really in-depth strategy and questionnaire that I ask them more about their business. And then we go from there. So hopefully, this Q&A has given you an insight into me a little more, design a little more and answered any questions or any queries that you guys have had and have been wanting to ask me. So if you do want to get to know me a little more and ask any questions, I would suggest following my Instagram account. I literally show my whole life on there, behind the scenes, things that I'm working on. So if you don't follow that page already, go and check it out. It is underscore Abby Design. And obviously if you have any questions, you can always DM me through there. So today's been a really fun video. I probably should do more of these because there were a lot of questions. So if I haven't answered yours, hopefully I can do another video answering some more of those questions. But if you do have any more questions or anything that you wanna ask me, feel free to pop them in the comments below so I can go through and answer all of them. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see some more design content.